Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I feel like I don't belong to this format in a, for several reasons. One is, as, far as, as you understood from this video, I'm not, the only, I'm not the one who was supposed to be here and talking to you. The person whose video address you just saw and listened is Ilgar Mamadov, the chairman of Republican Alternative, the party which are we together with our friends founded this party, and I'm a member of the board of the party. The government might have spent the five years and a half of his life uh, in prison. He was jailed in 2013 uh, when we had a presidential election and as the European Court of Human Rights wrote in his decision, uh, the purpose of Ilgar Mamadov's arrest was to silence him and to keep him out of the uh, uh, presidential election because he was going to nominate himself for the presidency. So he spent five and a half years in prison. He was released uh, recently in, in, in August, and he has a travel ban. So that's why he is not here. And he is released conditionally, by the way. So it's still justice is not fulfilled in his case. Um, but my, my second reason of being uh, uncom feeling uncomfortable here is that I'm not a human rights defender. I have never been, uh, and uh, I'm not even an NGO activist. I used to have an academic career and taught at the Baker State University Law Faculty. I cannot do that anymore for political reasons because I'm engaged in oppositional uh, party. So, uh, <clears throat> and also the time limit uh, is severe. Uh, there's almost nothing left for me to talk about. <laughs> so anyway, I will try to do my best. Um, of course, um, Ilgar Mamedov should have presented his personal story and I'm not the perfect person to talk about him, even though we are close friends, but uh, the, the difficulty is that it is always, even for professional biographers, it is difficult to storify the sequence of events of someone else's life. So uh, I hope that you and most importantly Ilgar uh, will forgive me if I will talk more about real Republican alternative rather about Ilgar Mamadov. And this is actually our vision uh, in politics, so we do not personalize what we do. Because one of the uh, uh, problem of our country is that everything becomes too much personal. Uh, our country is, if I may say so, uh, under-institutionalized and over-personalized. So people pay too much attention to personalities, which, is, which will, goes back to some traditional ways of, of lives and, and, and dealings with uh, public affairs in, in, in Azerbaijan. We want to break it, and I, th I think we, we've managed to break it. Uh, we, we, we decided from the very beginning that, apart from many other mistakes that politicians can and normally do, there are two strategic mistakes that politicians should avoid. One is self-glorification. This is a typical mistake what politicians do, especially when they are in opposition, and also when they are in government. They uh, uh, they attribute all the good things to themselves and they avoid uh, uh, being part of some injustices and mistakes that their posts uh, led to. So we decided not to glorify ourselves. Um, whatever we do, uh, we present it as a collective achievement. We have managed to build a collective identity for our organization, which is real. Uh, it, this is a shortcut of Republican alternative. I will tell you uh, why we chose this name later. Uh, and and of, course, of course, when you glorify yourself, you, you, you risk yourself becoming a, a bubble or an air balloon. And as the saying goes, the fate of the balloon is on the needle point. So you can blow up immediately at any time. Second strategical mistake that a politician can do is self-victimization. Okay, uh, societies, uh, do feel empathy and respect to those who were victims of political repression or oppressions. In that way, Azerbaijan is no different. And of course, uh, we do feel the support from the public, but when you enter the politics with that background, 
that, oh, I was victimized, I was victim of political repression. I don't know how it works in, in your respective countries. In Azerbaijan, it doesn't look like a, uh, a useful tool for a politician to, to, to employ because um, people want to see a successful person, a person who has self-esteem, self-confidence, most importantly. And when you keep talking about your prison life or how you were victimized by the regime, I mean, you, you will never reach the top of, of the political uh, pyramid. So we do not victimize ourselves, even though every one of us have suffered something. Of course, uh, the greatest suffering was the government matters. He was in prison. I lost my job, for example, which I, uh, I cannot teach anymore at the Baku State University. For, for, Many others uh, also left, some left, some lost their property, some lost their job, some lost their freedom. And uh, <clears throat> we do not elaborate on that. Now, who, Republican alternative, why we chose this name? Because we, in, in 2009, when we first decided to establish this organization, we saw that our country is gradually drifting away from Republican ideals and, and, and values. And uh, as Elgar mentioned, uh, there was a sort of proto-monarchical waves of the ruling the country. One could, for theoretical reasons, argue that democracy and monarchy do not necessarily uh, uh, <clears throat> contradict each other. I know, uh, I used to teach that. There are 11 members of the Council of Europe are monarchies, like UK, Belgium, Netherlands, Spain, Norway, Sweden, and they're all both monarchies and democracies. So why monarchy as such should be a problem? Now, we all know where we're living, and we all know uh, uh, the, our, the past of our country, and we know that monarchy is not the right way. And personally, I do not believe that monarchy will be established in Azerbaijan, but still, drifting away from Republican ideals and values is one of the greatest risks that our country is facing. Now, REWAL is an alternative, stands for not only being in opposition to the government, which is now ruling the, the, the country, but also uh, it's an ambition to change the system from fundamentally change the system. We're not claiming that we're better than the government. We never blame the government. In fact, all the uh, uh, problems and well, the sufferings uh, we've faced is also partly our choice. It's not just the government policies. We chose to go this way. We chose to live this life. So uh, um, it is two sides story. So okay, the government offered us several opportunities. I myself was offered by the government a certain position in the government. I could have built an, a successful academic career. I decided to continue with what we have started in 2009, and that is why I'm still. Uh, <clears throat> and Ilgar is, have travel ban. I cannot teach at the back of So it is also our choice. So you have to remain positive. It's not about being optimistic. Don't confuse these terms. It's about being cool about your fate. It's about be staying positive about what you have been doing. And uh, probably this is the only way of uh, remaining uh, uh, um, and continuing the, the, the successful way of political uh, uh, career. Also, uh, we, are, we have managed as Real to attract the uh, attention of young generation. Uh, this is perhaps one of the biggest reasons that Real is successful, because we are on the wave of the generational change. And generational change in Azerbaijan is the most important change. It's unstoppable. No political force can stop it. During the last 30 years, the new generation grew up. Um, 30 years is a, is a very important uh, uh, milestone, because 30 years ago, or almost 30 years ago, Soviet Union collapsed. Uh, the colleague, uh, professor from China, mentioned that he grew up in China or was born in China. I was born in Soviet Union, and I grew up in Soviet Union. I uh, received Soviet education. Uh, <clears throat> I do not blame the past, don't get me wrong. What, I, but what I'm saying is that this was a completely different system which we were trying to get rid of. Not only in Azerbaijan, Russians themselves were trying to get rid of that system. And uh, uh, now we're somehow again trapped in the, what we have been trying to get rid of. This is a bit a kind of deja vu. Uh, especially when you saw what Putin is saying and doing 
And of course, Russia still have a cultural leverage on Azerbaijan because of the political past. Which was, when, we saw, when we see what Erdogan has been doing in Turkey and where the majority of our population is Turkic, so that's why the cultural leverage of Turkey is a, is a, is a big factor. And when you see the Russian television is being entirely anti-Western, anti-liberal, and the Turkish television anti-Western and anti-liberal, then you, when you're trying to build a, uh, uh, an environment in Azerbaijan which is heavily brainwashed by Russian and Turkish television, uh, uh, it is also, it's, a, it's a challenge. But new generation is different and what makes us hopeful because uh, new generation, um, they have different worldview. There are some risks as well because my generation, uh, we, were, we, we consider independence of our country as the greatest achievement in the history. And by doing so, by viewing the independence as the greatest achievement of our we somehow overlook the importance of freedom. Um, now, what I see in the new generation, they take independence for granted. Yes, they fight for freedom, and that is good. But in their fight for freedom, they seem to overlook the importance of independence. So, what we as Real is trying to do is to bring these two concepts in peace because freedom without independence is inconceivable and independence without freedom is uh, <clears throat> incomplete. I'm, uh, okay. Okay, I, I'm, I was confused by this clock from the very beginning. So, anyway, of course, the, the time limit was severe and uh, I apologize for taking time, uh, especially uh, the lady from uh, Russia. I took your time, but I hope you will forgive me. Thank you. Thank you.